Congratulations, you've got a great new social application that seems to be all the rage. But you keep getting reports that when users download a new horde of profile thumbnails, the application crawls along and feels slow. My name is Colt McCandless, and even though you're in a managed memory environment, improperly using memory can still kick off a load of performance problems. And allocating too many objects in a short time frame is a clear problem that you should be aware of. You have to remember that the memory heap in Android is segmented up into separate spaces based upon what type of allocation is occurring. And as allocations in any of the spaces grow, a GC event can be kicked off in order to make more room for future allocations. And depending on what runtime you're using, GC events can be stop the world events, meaning that any managed code that's in flight on any thread will stop, the GC event will run, and then only when it's done will execution continue. Now, halted execution from a GC event isn't really normally a noticeable performance problem. However, a lot of them occurring over and over and over and over again can quickly eat up your frame time. The more time you're spending doing GCs, the less time you have to do other interesting stuff like uh, rendering or streaming audio. Now, the number one cause of GC cascades like this is something called memory churn. Effectively, memory churn is when a high number of objects are allocated and potentially freed in a really small amount of time. You know, like uh, that new function that you've just written that checks if a movie director for a new movie has been swayed by public opinion yet, and if not, allocates a horde of social posts that pushes them up to the intertubes. Yeah, just like that. First off, you should calm down. This actually isn't really that big of a deal. Secondly, the quick allocation of so many objects effectively pollutes the recently allocated object space with a flood of reserved memory blocks. Once you reach a threshold of reserved memory, a GC event will be kicked off to clear up space. Even if the memory allocations are tiny, the volume of them creates pressure on your heap to kick off more GC events over time, which can eat into your precious frame time and cause the user to notice a performance different, since you'll eventually be slipping past your 16 millisecond rendering barrier. Now, fixing these types of problems are actually pretty straightforward. To start, if you're noticing in the memory monitor that you're getting a flood of GC events in a very short time frame, then this points to a high chance that you've got a lot of memory churn going on here. You can then dig a little deeper using the allocation tracker tool in Android Studio to identify any areas where you may be seeing a horde of similar object types coming from uh, roughly the same call stack in a very short period of time. This is a classic sign of memory thrash and easy to see that it's the right place to start your investigation. And once you've identified the culprit, it's time to start moving around your code to fix the problem, which itself is uh, also pretty straightforward. For example, make sure that you're not allocating objects in inner loops for um, obvious reasons. Try to push those allocations outside of the loop or avoid them entirely if you can. The same advice goes for allocating objects in the on draw functions of your views. This is effectively the same problem as an inner loop. Uh, anytime the screen needs to be redrawn or an animation is occurring, you'll end up with calls to these functions every single frame, which can quickly add up, adding pressure to your heaps. Now, for situations where you can't remove the need to create new objects in these scenarios, consider using an object pool pattern. Uh, effectively, you have an object pool that allocates a group of objects, and rather than having your code go to the heap each time, it instead grabs available objects from your memory pool. Of course, the downside of this pattern is that you're now responsible for freeing objects back to the memory pool when you're done with them, which means that for high churn objects, there's going to be a bit of a mental overhead needed to properly manage when when these objects are created and destroyed. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. The rest of the Android performance patterns content has other great tips and tricks to solve and address these problems. Uh, and don't forget to join our Google Plus community for other insights from fellow developers. So keep calm, profile your code, and always remember, perf matters.